minus 15 seconds. Minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Tour day can start out any time of the morning, 6.30, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the morning, leaving from Las Vegas and driving the 65 miles from Las Vegas north on US 95 to the entrance of the Nevada test site. The test site was picked in 1951 out of three other sites here. And the reason that the scientists came here is that they were looking for a place to do on-continent nuclear weapons tests. Uh, at the time, they were doing all the nuclear weapons tests on the Pacific. It was very expensive. President Truman wanted to see if they could find a location in the United States to do the smaller, lower yield nuclear tests on continent. And they ended up with the Nevada test site. At the time, it was called the Nevada Proving Grounds. Testing out here has been done in a variety of ways. And when we were doing the atmospheric test, uh, the test it was amazing what they did. They would fly the airplanes out of a Kirtland Air Force Base in Albuquerque and drop the devices out of an airplane. They suspended devices from balloons. They put them on top of wooden towers. They put them on top of steel towers. They shot one out of a cannon. That was through the 1950s. Then with the limited test ban treaty, we went to underground testing and tests were done anywhere from 600 feet to 2,000 feet underground. Uh, and we went through extensive reviews to assure that that radioactive material would stand aground, that there wouldn't be any ventings coming up to the surface. In all, the United States has done 1,054 nuclear weapons tests, and of that, 928 of those were done here at the Nevada test sites. And the first thing that visitors see when they come to the test site is the Frenchman Dry Lake Bed. That's where the first atmospheric tests were conducted out here on the test site. The first test was conducted on January 27, 1951. The people from a distance, they'll see the dry lake bed and it's hard to see anything. But once we start getting onto the dry lake bed, when you're driving through, you see a lot of different structures. There's the hotel, motel walls. What the scientists were doing with those is they built the faces of those out of different types of materials, brick, mortar, concrete block. And they wanted to see what the pressures from the blast would do to those walls, what would stand up, what wouldn't stand up. Um, you also see an old railroad bridge that is sitting out there. And it's pretty remarkable because it's, it's one of the things that really gives you a good idea what the heat and blast effects. You've got these very thick I-beams that have been bent almost like spaghetti uh, that the train was setting on top of. Some of the other things that you see when you're out there, there's some concrete domes. What we know about the principles of hardening of concrete were developed out there on Frenchman Flat at the test site. The scientists used different types of mixtures of concrete, of mortar, mixed with rebar, different sizes of rebar, so they could understand how to harden concrete. One of the more unusual things that's also out there on, on Frenchman Flat is the uh, old bank vault. Uh, the standards that U.S. bank vaults are built today are built based on the tests that they did out there at the site. They built an actual vault and you can see where the sides have been peeled away from the blast, but the contents that were inside that vault at the time of the blast survived all of that. So what they were looking at is, is construction of items, how they would withstand the heat and blast. They weren't looking at the, the effects of the radiation, but how things would hold up to the heat and blast. And so a lot of modern day standards that we have for structures that we have now, bank vaults for a multitude of things, have come about as a result of the atmospheric testing that took place there on Frenchman Flat during the atmospheric testing days. ICECAP was to be the last underground nuclear test that was going to be conducted here on the test site before the moratorium was signed in 1992. 
but events of the world caught up with us here at the Nevada test site and the moratorium was signed and that test was never conducted. And what you have left standing there is the tower and inside that tower is the canister that would have held the nuclear device. Uh, an 1800 foot hole is there, all the cables are on the ground and some of the support trailers are still sitting there. Those support trailers is where all the information would have come up the cables and been re would have been recorded in those uh, trailers and as well as a part of redundancy those signals would have been sent here to the control point and recorded in the control point. This is the control point at the Nevada test site. The control point is where everything happens on the day of an experiment. All the scientists, the technician, the security people, anybody that's associated with the experiment are here in the control point. This is where all the information comes in to, to tell the scientist if their experiment has been successful. In essence, it becomes the uh, nerve center for the test site on the day of an experiment. Sedan Crater was done in 1962, July of 1962. It was part of the Plowshare program where they were looking for peaceful uses for nuclear weapons. What they were trying to see is if you could take uh, a very large device, in this case it was 104 kilotons, and use it to dig a canal, a lake, uh, if you could blast away mountains to make a, a pass for a highway system. They wanted to see if you could use a nuclear device to dig with. The answer to the question is yes, but this nation never did it because of the residual radiation that's left behind. But what you've got with Sedan Crater is a big hole in the ground that's 1,800 feet across and about 300 feet deep, and it shows you the force that you can have from a 104 kiloton nuclear device. The Apple II houses, uh, that was a test that was done in 1955. It was a civil defense effects test. The civil defense agency of the time that was here in the United States wanted to see how modern Americana would withhold or withstand uh, a nuclear attack on the United States. If you remember, uh, a lot of people may have read the history and seen, and, and for those that were alive during the time, the mentality was, was duck and cover, or red under every bed. And so it was on the top of everybody's mind about safety from, from nuclear weapons. So what the Civil Defense Agency of the time did was create um, American homes, wood structures, brick structures, two-story homes with basements, and they outfitted these homes with everything that you would find in a modern 1955 home. Uh, they put mannequins inside, they put food, they put cars, they put radios that were working. Everything in the house was fully operational that you would find of the time. Then after the test, the Apple II test, they came in to see what the effects were on that American home so that they as a civil defense agency could prepare some type of preparedness plans that uh, the American citizens could use. When operations allow us, we do tours out here. We do about 8,000 people a year, but the process that you've got to go through is very simple. You contact the Department of Energy in Las Vegas. We'll bring you out here in a bus. If it's a smaller group, we have vans that'll bring you out here, and we'll tour you the 200 to 250 miles that you'll drive in a day, Seven, seeing the sights six, of this piece of property five, that's larger than four, the state of Rhode Island. Three, two, one.